Welcome back to the Physio Bros. Today we're going to teach you how to treat your own ITB and get you back to pain-free, symptom-free running. In order to do this, we've split it off into five different phases, which is going to teach you how to both minimize the irritation firstly at your ITB and then progressively reload both your ITB and the structures around it so you can return to doing running and the other activities that you love and hopefully smash some PBs in the process. So let's get straight into phase one. So guys, the first phase is our pain phase, where you need to be performing active recovery. Now, a checklist to know if you're in this phase is to ask yourself the question, are you experiencing pain on the outside of your knee following your running or during your running? Now, is this pain now persisting post-run, where you now might be noticing it when you're walking down hills or stairs or even on flat ground? And if that's the case, then it's probably time for you to cease running. A good alternative to running, so you're performing active recovery, is to cycle on a low seat height or do walking on a treadmill at an incline. There are also some other exercises that you can perform to help get you started, and we're gonna show you those now. So guys, another exercise to get you started is the ITB floss. You wanna lie on the edge of a bed and drop your legs so your knee is lower than your hip height and you're gonna try and kick your bottom and work through that range like that. This is a great way to get your ITB moving through that compression range but without causing irritation or pain or discomfort. For cycling, we recommend a low seat setup as this will reduce the time that your knee spends in the ITB compression zone which will reduce irritation at your knee. The same principle applies when we want you to do uphill treadmill walking, as this is going to reduce the irritation and inflammation at your knee as well. We want you to specifically use a treadmill though, as this is going to help you avoid walking on the flat outside or downhill components, which will actually irritate your knee further. So these exercises that we're performing in the pain phase are essential for building strength at your glutes and quads, which ultimately will provide stability and help offload your ITB. So guys, today we're gonna to be busting some myths about how to treat your ITB. Myth number one is that you need to be stretching your ITB. Now we know that this does absolutely nothing and it's time to chuck it out the window. The most important thing about phase one is that we're doing active recovery. No load can be just as limiting as overloading during this phase, which brings us on to phase two. So phase two is our building load phase, where we're gonna build our foundation of strength through slow, heavy resistance-based exercise. Our checklist for this is that you should be pain-free when walking on the flat, however, you still might have a bit of pain when walking downstairs. If you fit those two categories, then you feel free to start ripping into these exercises. Our next exercise is gonna be the ITB split squat. Now, the really important part about this is that you wanna shift your weight backwards onto actually onto your back leg, not into your front leg. This is a really good way to load your ITB and work it through that compression range. Our second myth is foam rolling. Stop doing it. We know that you need about 900 pounds of force to make any changes in your ITB. And on top of that, that's not gonna do anything in your recovery anyway. So stop foam rolling. So guys, phase three is our plyometrics. This is where we're gonna introduce a hop, skip, and a jump back into your step. So the checklist for this phase is to make sure you're not getting any pain when walking downstairs, and especially not on flat ground. If that's the case, then try these exercises. So guys, if you're pain-free while performing your beginner plyometric exercises, then it's time to start your uphill treadmill running as well. For this, we've discussed in a previous video where we talked about ITB treadmill running workouts. But as a quick cheat sheet, if you start with a three and a half to 5% incline, that's a great place to get you started. 
You could also increase the seat height on the bike and also have a go at these more advanced plyometric exercises. Once you can do these, you're ready for phase four. Phase four is our flat earth phase because the goal is to get you back to running on flat ground. So you've built the load, you've built the strength, and now we're gonna get you back to your body getting used to running and the repetitive nature of it, but this time pain-free. In order to control your load though in this phase, we want you to continue with that heavy slow resistance training that we talked about in phase two, but the plyometrics in phase three, we want you to slowly start phasing them out. This is gonna allow your body to not be overloaded in this essential phase. So in order to do this, we want you to do five different runs over two weeks, which you can see here, which is gonna slowly progress you and your incline down to running on flat, with the goal being a nice continuous flat run on the treadmill. The final part of phase four is we're gonna let you loose and you're allowed to run outside. However, it's really important that you keep your roots as flat as possible and minimize the amount of elevation change or incline during those runs. This is really important in minimizing your irritation and preventing you re-inflaming your symptoms too early. So guys, phase five, you've kicked your ITB pain to the curb and it's time for you to go chase those heels, but don't go chasing those waterfalls. That's so bad. <laughs> you love it. You should really feel comfortable going out on any run and slowly reintroducing your trail runs into your routine. If you do notice an increase in ache or pain in your knee on return to doing your trail running or your heels or your stair climbing, it's really important that you try and go back down to your flat ground running as we don't want to provoke and worsen your pain. If this has happened, then it's probably a sign that you've progressed through the phases a little bit too quickly. That's it for now, thanks for tuning in. Try these tips and get yourself back to your running glory. We are all about trying to get you to set your PB, so make sure you like, follow, subscribe, and we'll see you next week.